Now, <clears throat> with that being said, we could now append gmail.com or something like that to uh, Inf InfoSec Institute. The rest is kind of like taking a candy from a baby, and here's why. If we can have a valid certificate for yahoo.com, then all the intermediate search in your browser will trust it because it's coming as a child or leaf of another valid cert, which is our real cert. Visualize it this way. Yahoo.com is valid, but so is yahoo.com.infosecinstitute.com. If infosecinstitute.com has a signed and valid cert of its own, Now, therefore, we can present the client with our Ford cert. It'll be taken as valid, and the victim won't see the big this certificate and not cannot be validated warning or any of those crazy messages that kind of alert them to the fact that something's not quite right. Now, um, here's the thing. Ironically, most of the world, specifically the average end user, will just click accept on that thing, even if it says it's an invalid certificate or it can't be validated. But people that are relatively tech savvy or security savvy, they won't they won't accept that. They'll probably, you know, cancel out. Now what it looks like, basically the connection between SSL strip and the real SSL server that the victim think that they're connecting to will truly be an SSL session. So our SSL strip Linux box here will establish an SSL session with the real web server. At the same time, the session between SSL strip and the victim is plain old HTTP. Now they never know this because they just trust the fact that when they click on that secure login, they're now communicating SSL. So what happens is when they do that, they click that secure sign in button, and then they enter the credentials and send them, those credentials are really coming across an unencrypted HTTP session, which is basically clear text. SSL strip sends this, rip this off, sends it right over to EdderCap or whatever you happen to have listening. It could be other things, actually. Then SSL strip proxies these credentials that the client sends over to the real server that they think they're connecting to and forms a real SSL session on that side. Now, here's basically what it looks like. You can see on the right here, the victim establishes or thinks they're establishing an SSL session with the bank server. In actuality, they're establishing an HTTP session with SSL strip. SSL strip now forges a fake certificate based on what it proxied and got from the bank. All right. After it forges that fake certificate, it now sends that certificate to the victim. The victim knows no better because the certificate looks valid. Proceeds to send credentials. Again, they're coming over SSL over port, excuse me, over HTTP over port 80. Uh, they're being redirected to port 10,000, and we'll look at that in just a second when we break the commands down. And then SSL strip can rip those credentials right off and send them to whatever uh, else you happen to have listening. Now, the first command we entered in the video, or one of the first commands, was this echo command. And basically, I'm just echoing the value of 1 to this config file. This is the IP forward file. And all it does is turn on or enable IP forwarding on your Linux box. In other words, it allows your Linux box to act like a proxy. Now, you can do the same thing in Windows. It's a registry edit to do it. Now, remember, to do a man in the middle, we have to do this. We have to uh, have our box acting like a router so that it can forward packets. All right. One of the other things you saw me do was the IP tables command. So we just turn on IP tables, put in a simple rule, um, you know, dash T, which specifies tables, we're saying NAT here, and we're using uh, we're using the dash A, which basically tells us uh, to append a rule to an accepted chain. So we're appending the pre-routing rule. We're specifying a protocol of TCP, specifying a destination port of 80, and we're saying now take that and do an action. What action? The dash J specifies action. We're saying redirect 
that traffic to the port of 10,000. And the reason we send it to 10,000 is that's the port SSL strip listens on by default. Now with SSL strip we could specify another port. It's just that when you did the IP tables command you'd have to specify that same port in your IP table rule here. Alright, continuing on. Next thing we did uh, was ARP spoof. So this is how we ARP spoof 132 which is the victim and we make the victim think that we're the gateway. Now we're basically sending ARP applies to the target of 132 basically saying 192.168.1.1 is at the MAC address of our Linux machine and again if that's confusing to you go back and look at the first man in the middle video because we get into that a lot more because we're not really doing SSL so um, you know we, we depend on ARP a lot more in that case. So essentially we're telling the target that we're the gateway which is part of the equation here. Alright then we went on and fired up SSL strip we passed the dash A option this is a little A it logs all SSL traffic to and from the server the built-in server in SSL strip we pass the dash K option kill all sessions in progress in other words you know if there's already a session an SSL session established it's going to kill that one and force a reestablishment which allows us to do the hijack and the dash F button basically or the dash F option basically allows us to send a lock favicon on our request in other words they, they should still see the little lock that makes them think they're communicating SSL even though they're not now with all of this we did have to fire up editor cap as well uh, we passed the dash T option with it which simply specifies text only mode because we don't want to deal with GUIs uh, and trying to you know configure this via GUI we pass a dash Q option which specifies quiet mode and does not print packet content since we don't need it we don't need packet content because um, we're getting everything we need on the other side here and then we have the dash I option which specifies the uh, interface if you're using Ethernet 1 on your uh, Linux box you'd specify ETH 1 so forth and so on. In my case when I did the video I'm using uh, Ether0 as my network card so I specified Ether0 as my interface with the dash I option. Alright that's pretty much it. Um, that's what we did. That's how it worked. We just walked you through the commands. Uh, what I would recommend now is going back taking a look at the video once more with the notes that we just gave you in this presentation and I'm gonna do a follow-up with this and dig a little bit deeper actually I'll dig a lot deeper in the SSL and we'll look at some alternative ways to defeat it uh, some are not gonna be as elegant as this but you know sometimes you need speed uh, you don't need elegance so we're gonna look at some other ways to defeat it uh, as well as some other things Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. See you next time.